April 2012, mowing the yard, got short of breath, which was very unusual, never happened before. Sunday, I was going up the steps to go to bed and got short of breath again. So I said, I need to see the doctor. So Monday, I had an appointment, walked across the street from the office where I worked to the doctor's office, felt myself getting short of breath, passed out, smacked my head face first on the sidewalk. For some reason, I decided to be stubborn and wait for my husband, Mike, to come get me and take me to the hospital. She was, you know, wide awake and very aware, and so uh, took her to the hospital, and they did a CT scan of the contrast and found bilateral pulmonary emboli. My family was there, and things seemed to be going okay when I started going downhill. They did a CAT scan, found a brain bleed. So. I don't know if it was that night or the next night. I went to surgery for that and came out and told my husband they didn't know if I was going to make it or not. I was devastated. Ah. I still <clears throat> think about it. In that, somewhere in that point, they realized that I had an airway obstruction. The trachea basically collapsed. So in order to breathe, they put a trachea in. So they sent me to Dr. Maronian here at university. She didn't want to go through her life with a tube in her windpipe. She wanted to be normal again. So then we had to figure out some reconstructive options. And the ones that are written in the textbooks don't apply. We didn't have that kind of tissue uh, in that vicinity. So that's when I had to involve Dr. Zender to ask for his assistance and be more creative. One of my colleagues had used a technique to reconstruct a couple of people with smaller defects but a similar concept where he would implant some cartilage from the ear uh, and sort of layer it or lay it together, stack it together to get anywhere from three to five centimeters of length of basically a composite graft to reconstruct the windpipe. What they said they would do is take a piece of cartilage out of each ear, uh, take that cartilage, uh, open up, make an incision in her arm, place those the cartilage uh, pieces on top of the fascia and allow them to establish their own uh, blood flow. Then I harvest that skin, uh, sort of a rectangular piece with the cartilage underneath. I also take the fascia that's, that's sandwiched sort of on the deep side of that tissue. I take the radial artery and the veins that accompany it and just like a kidney transplant, I bring that tissue up and I suture it into the windpipe after I've opened it up with Dr. Maronian's help. When you start to look at the similarities in terms of the type of tissue, both require cartilage to reconstruct it so that it has a rigid skeleton. And the ear, especially the bowl part of the ear, has a very nice shape that matches what we need in the front portion of the windpipe wall. It's phenomenal when you look at it. These people are just purely dedicated people, and those are the people in the system that make it work. You know, it's not just a job, it's, it's something they have a passion about. What makes you come up with things like this, what makes you investigate things like this, and it's, you know, seeing that frustrated patient in your office, and you know, that sense of, you know, this patient wants to get better, you just haven't given them the tools to do it, or you just don't have the tools yet to do it, so it's that drive to help patients regardless of how bad their problems are and giving them informed consent, letting them know this is something new that we're going to try but also not giving up on them you know, and, and sticking by them and finding ways to make their lives better. We have a, a series of specialists that are interested in pushing the edge to not just accept, well, you're much better than where we started um, but we're wanting to say we want to get you back to normal, we want to take you back that extra step. University Hospitals has brought those people together and then we're fortunate that it also creates an environment of collaboration so that we can talk about these difficult patients and find unique solutions. Sleeping good, walking, talking, breathing, it's all good. It's amazing, truly amazing.